It's always great to be here in Owensboro. I always enjoy coming, and it's been a privilege and a blessing to serve each and every one of you, and I appreciate it so much. And it's good that we're all here together, and it's good that we're all here from both parties. Because I've always believed that there are things that we all agree on, or at least the vast majority of us can agree on, regardless of which party, which party you're from. Like most of us here, regardless of party, probably believe that your federal tax dollars should not pay for abortions. Well, the Democrat leaders in Washington disagree with you. The health care bill under President Obama promised Mark Stupak that it wasn't going to happen, but Pennsylvania has already put into place high risk pools from the health care bill that will pay for abortions. I think most of us here, regardless of party, believe the most important relationship in the health care is between patient and doctor. Well, the Democratic leadership in Washington disagrees with us. When they finally start understanding what's in the health care bill they voted for, what they're going to see is it requires 16,000 IRS agents just to implement. They're going to put a bureaucrat between you and your doctor every time it's in the bill and you can read it. I believe all of us, regardless of what party we're from, believe that Wall Street caused the problems, not Main Street. Well, the Democrat leaders in Washington again disagree with us. We passed the financial reform bill. The financial reform bill was passed that was endorsed by Goldman Sachs and Citigroup. And I can tell you from personal experience, every community banker, locally owned bank and credit union was against that bill because they said it affect their business and affect what they can do here locally. And finally, I'll talk another thing. I think we all can agree that there's no road to energy independence without coal. I think most of us can agree to that. Again, the Democratic leadership in Washington disagrees with you. The Obama administration's war on coal, get me, don't, it is a war on coal, has already cost, I know, Davis County jobs from a mine in Ohio County. But not only that, the cap and trade bill is going to cost thousands of jobs. You can talk about being for working people all you want, but when you want to take their jobs away from them, that's not defending the working people. And I challenge anybody, go to Highway 60, Take a ride and go towards Meat Canada as you pass aluminum smelters, wire plants, paper plants, chemical plants. All of those jobs are threatened by the cap and trade bill. Now, the Democrat leaders in Washington, they're there to represent their constituencies. Not the American, not the overall American people. Who are their constituencies? Speaker Pelosi's from San Francisco, California. George Miller's from East Bay, California. Henry Waxman is from Beverly Hills, California. These are the guys running Congress. Barney Franks from Boston, Massachusetts. And Charlie Rangel, though he's sidelined a little bit right now, is from New York City. All great cities. All great cities. But they're progressive and liberal enclaves that are running, whose constituents are running our country. Now let me say about them as well, they've all been nice to me. I run into them all the time and I deal with some of them daily. They're good people. But they're just wrong on the relationship between government and the citizens. And when you have people from between the coasts, they send people to Washington, D.C., even if they say they're going to vote against the bills, if they say they voted against the bills, if they go to Washington, D.C. and empower them to give the gavel to Speaker Pelosi, to put the people I put in front of you, chairman of the committees, they are endorsing, endorsing their policy from the day they show up in Washington, D.C. Well, let me tell you, I'm not here endorsing two years of partisan gridlock. I hope to go back to Washington. I would love to have your vote and be part of a new majority. A new majority, if you look at what happened in 1994, President Clinton went to a joint session of Congress in 1995, looked to the Republicans in the eyes and said, the era of big government is over. Republicans passed bills reforming welfare, as we know it. President Clinton signed it. They passed balanced budgets, and President Clinton signed it. So my hope is that President Obama, if there is a new majority in Washington, will come and meet us somewhere in the middle, like President Clinton did with the Republicans, who gave stability, the stability created the economy that we have, not because government created jobs, entrepreneurs created jobs, but they had certainty in what the policies were going to be coming down. Creating a growing economy to create opportunities for us, our generation, is my pledge. But my full and total and complete commitment is ensuring that our children and grandchildren have a better future than we even have of looking us in the face. Thank you very much. Appreciate you.